What's going on boys and girls? Welcome back to another Solo Leveling Arise video. All right guys, we're gonna be talking about a very hot topic, two hot topics as a matter of fact. We're gonna be talking about EXP, how to get it, what's the fastest way to level, and then gold. Something that everyone is struggling with, clearly, unless you're pay to win. I wanna talk about different ways to acquire these two very, very hot commodities, clearly some of the best things, but I also wanna give you guys a couple of disclaimers along the way, the, the, the cold truth, and there is a cold truth behind this, um, is number one, first and foremost, you're gonna need patience, okay? Um, gold is not easy to come by, I will explain every way to get it, so you guys can understand, maybe there's some ways you didn't know. Uh, same with the EXP, I'll explain every way to get it, but patience is going to be key. This is There is an idle aspect to this game for a reason, you guys can see right up here. This is huge, okay? If you don't have this package after it ends, this is going to set you back quite a bit. So pay to win players are going to have, at the very least, this big advantage, okay? So this package here is a one of the monthly packages that it, it gives you 30% more activity fund gold and EXP. So which means I'm gonna get more EXP every single time I claim. You guys can see right here, I've got the bonus time, the bonus time, the bonus here, and then the bonus here, right? All of these bonuses are going to eventually add up. The cold truth is, you're going to be a little bit behind compared to some of the pay to win players. That, I just want to get that out of the way. The 30% acquisition of, of uh, gold and EXP is huge. All right. It's, it's nothing to scoff at. So for free to play players, I'm also on my free to play account struggling with this, of course, but there are certain ways to take advantage of it. So let's talk about EXP first, because I think that's one that's going to be very important. The slowest way to get EXP, but one of the more efficient ways because of how many how many times you can use this is going to be, going to be through mining. Okay, so let me just show you guys the different modes here of acquiring all these things okay so let's go to the game modes and you guys know this already you guys get these keys right here and these keys will give you guys these gates okay and now every gate here is going to have a certain amount of exp you can get you can, like, you can see here this one gives you like 1293 uh this one over here gives you 1356 this one here gives you 1356 etc right so look at the exp that you get based on the actual uh difficulty of the the gate itself now remember you can increase the level. The higher the level, guys, the more power these enemies will have, but at the same time, the more loot, EXP, and different types of uh, items you'll get along the way, including reputation, okay? So this is very important, guys, to remember that. Now, this also includes gold. So gold will be able to be uh, acquired from this as well, too. So gates are gonna be your, your slowest way of leveling, but also a way that you always wanna use all of your keys. Never, ever, ever, guys, have zero keys left. Okay, unless unless you're saving for the event that's currently going on, right? But this is important. Gates are going to be your best way of getting EXP. Now, not to mention when the gate resets, you're going to have four, uh, four times or three times, sorry, that you can get three different EXP uh, icons here. Make sure you clear those. And then once the three EXP icons are gone, you're going to get yourself the gold icons. Now, these can run unlimited amount of times. So if you are running gates all the time, you're going to actually benefit from getting quite a bit of gold. So this is an easy way to get that and get it out of the way. All right. Here's another one too. Mining. Mining is easy. Now, mining is specifically for gold. Okay. So keep that in mind and it gives you mining exp but that's important as well too because the more you mine the more bonuses you get look at this gold acquired gold acquired additional rewards etc right now this can go pretty high up and after it does go to a certain point you're going to get a lot more of the benefits from mining so make sure you are keeping up with this guys and putting in as much mining effort as you possibly can all right so this is an important one don't forget about this this is huge okay it does build over time and it, and it will benefit you in the long run now the most simple way to gain EXP, of course, is doing story mode. There's nothing that beats story mode. Now, this is where people get a little bit a little bit flustered, okay? They go through the story completely, and then they'll get stuck, right? So, for example, a lot of people get stuck at chapter, I believe it's chapter 6, and then you have to hit a certain level in order to do provocation. Once you finish provocation, though, guys, you will unlock chapter 7, and then in chapter 7, when you get to a certain point, you're going to actually unlock hard mode. Now, hard mode gives so much freaking EXP. This is the fastest way to level. Like, this is what you want to focus on. You guys can see here, I require level 40 to complete it. But when I was first doing the stage, each stage at hard mode, that's a main story hard mode stage, gives like... 11 to 20,000 EXP. It's ludicrous how much EXP you get from here. So the moment you get stuck on normal mode, guys, what they want you to do is go back and forth between hard and normal and complete the stages until you finally get locked out at a certain point. So in this case, level 40, right? But if I go back to normal, 
you guys will see the newest stage for me requires me to get 41. So I do have to do more hard mode in order to get through this. So going between the storylines is huge. The moment you unlock hard mode, you'll start getting way more EXP and you'll see yourself skyrocket up there in regards to getting yourself levels, all right? So very, very important to remember that. Now, don't forget to also do the side missions, right? I've been doing some of these side missions. I'm going back now. Yes, the EXP is not as great, but if you add it all up, like look at this one, it gives you uh, 766 plus gold. This one here will give you about 800 probably, etc., etc. Now, the higher you go up in the story modes, right? The higher the stages, the more EXP you get. Look at the 7,519 EXP for that. So the story mode side quests are very, very important as well too. You should be focusing on those. And don't forget, hard mode also possesses these, right? Like for example, this one here, check it out. 3,719 for a quick uh, level 37 quest, right? And it, can, it continues from there. So all of these stages are going to add up for EXP for you. It's one of the easiest ways to get yourself leveled up. All right, so EXP is going to come from those two places more than anywhere else. That's that's pretty much it. There's really no other way to do it. Now, gold is a whole different story. All right, gold is going to be done in various different ways. Um, of course, from, the, from outside of the idol, don't forget the EXP comes from here as well too. We already talked about it in the beginning. But as for gold, uh, one of the places a lot of people are not doing is when you do your game modes, when you do um, instant instant dungeons and all crow missions. It's a great way to collect gold, and I'll explain to you guys how, okay? So when you get yourself, or even, even mining actually, mining when you're, when you're getting drops, when you get artifacts and you don't want them, there's a little icon over here, right? You guys can click on it and then sell the icons you don't, or, or the artifacts you don't want. Look at this, 1,800 for that one, 7,000 for that one, 12,000 for that one, etc. So you guys should be looking at all of your artifacts and considering selling the ones that you don't need, right? If it has a bad substat, if it has a bad main stat, etc., all of these things will factor in for you to keep or sell your, your artifacts. So make sure, guys, you're going through this and getting rid of all of your commons. When you're done with your commons, obviously, get rid of your, your rares when you're done with your rares. If you've moved on to epics, all your rares won't even matter anymore. You're just gonna focus on epics and legendaries. And they do sell for quite a bit, right? So if you do start selling a lot of these useless ones, for example, you can rack yourself up quite a bit of gold uh, in, in in collecting artifacts and selling artifacts. Now, one thing I want to talk about about gold. This is one. This is one. If you're not a pay to, if you're not a pay to win player, if you're a free to play player, you should not be using your gold on every weapon you get. It's it's a huge problem, guys. Okay, so you should be mostly focusing on one element of each weapon that for uh, for Jin Wu, and then oh look at this. What the hell did we just get? Nice. Look at that, guys. That's amazing. Okay, sorry, I'm very excited for that. Um, I went up two levels. So make sure you're doing that, okay? It's very, very important that you do that. Now, outside of that, um, don't be don't be leveling up every hero either. Your hero leveling specifically, guys, should be safe for events. There's going to be hunter events where you can level up hunters and get like event points. That's something else you want to focus on. Just go for the top three or four units that you have and stop there. Also remember, gold is also required for skills and leveling up artifacts. So gold is pretty much going to be the biggest crux for every player out there. So that's one of the better ways to get gold. Sell your artifacts and do that. Now, another really good place to get gold and anything else really is going to be in this game mode called Battlefield of Trials, right? Now, Battlefield of Trials has different stages you can go through and each stage will drop something for you. For example, this one will draw drop designs. This one drops uh, time glasses. We've got ourselves see, like, 65,000 gold. Uh, some some cubes. If we go through again, 85,000 gold, etc. Now remember, there's two different versions of this. There's a hunter mode as well. So if you're stuck on Jin Wu's, go to the hunter mode. Look at this. The first one gives you 40k. Right? I haven't even started doing this yet because I'm saving this for like a rainy day. But look at that, 50k, right? And it keeps going from there. So make sure you are in fact going through both of these and getting them done. The same thing also applies, guys, to instant dungeons where you can sell the artifacts that you get here for accessories. The same thing applies for for the gear that you would normally get from normal dungeons. And then lastly, the other place here is Battle of Time. Now this place is a little more difficult. It's a challenge mode, and whoever finishes the challenge mode and gets a ranking, you get yourself prizes along the way. Uh, the prize Prizes are fairly decent. Uh, you guys can see achievement prizes here. They do give you gold. They give you guys um, skill ruins. They give you guys enhancements, etc. But you guys can definitely get gold here. This is more of a higher level tier. Really, at this point, you're not really struggling with gold that much if you're already doing this kind of content. But you will eventually get to the point where you will struggle with gold yet again. So gold, guys, whether you're free to play or pay to win, the brutal truth is it's meant to be a crux. 
right? This game is not something they want you to finish like in a day or two. They want you guys to struggle. They want you to spend money, clearly. And at the same time, they want you to be patient because they don't have enough content here to supplement a month worth of full, full on gaming. And a lot of people are going in on this game pretty damn heavily. So remember that. Just take your time. Enjoy the game for what it is. But those are all the best ways that you get EXP. So the best ways, guys, is story mode up to normal until you unlock hard. Go to hard. Do as many of those as you can. Then do the side missions. Then always do your, do your mining and do your, um, your gates don't stop doing those uh, and those and don't forget to collect your idol those are the best ways to get exp as a matter of fact it's the only ways to get exp so doing that will net you the fastest exp gain between normal and hard and side quests and then for gold you're going to want to do everything you possibly can to selling artifacts you don't need uh going through all of your challenges um, and also don't forget this there's also challenge mode here right make sure you are doing these as well too because they actually do give you quite a bit of gold i know 5000 doesn't seem like a lot but it does add up fairly quickly so make sure you are completing these challenge rules not to mention you are getting yourself free characters and eventually getting yourself a free ssr weapon times two uh so these are nothing to scoff at make sure you are focusing on this so that's the truth though guys the honest to god truth is this game is doing it to everybody it's holding you back for a reason because again it wants you to take your time and that's why they give you those warnings to get out of the you know stop playing the game go do something else after an hour and after two hours uh and i think that's important to remember that this game is an idle game slash gotcha rpg they're all built this way they're all meant to stop you and gate you until you spend either too much money or you just be more patient and give it some time all right guys this is pain hope you enjoyed the video i'll talk to you guys in the next one take care